Yeah. yeah. Now, a year ago, Jeremy raced James and me from Italy to London. James and I in his ridiculous aeroplane, Jeremy in a Bugatti Veyron. And annoyingly, he won. Then we heard from a bunch of aeroplane enthusiasts called the RAF. They said, why don't you come up to our place and we've got a plane that'll give your car a run for its money. And, well, seeing as I'm the only one who hasn't yet driven the Bugatti Veyron, I took up the challenge. The 1,000 horsepower legend is back. And, if I'm honest, I'm a bit nervous. Not because of the car itself, but because of the burden that now rests on my shoulders. Because when Jeremy drove the Veyron, all he had to beat was a, an incompetent James in a useless little aeroplane. Then, when James went to Germany and maxed it, the car didn't even break sweat. But this time, the Veyron's honour really is at stake, because never before has it gone up against something like this. The most modern, the most high-tech strike fighter on the planet. The Eurofighter Typhoon. And for once, when it comes to figures, the Bugatti really is well and truly top-trumped. Its twin engines develop 20,000 pounds of thrust each, punching the Eurofighter up to 65,000 feet and a top speed of over 1,500 miles an hour. This machine is the cutting edge of what a plane can do. It's actually designed to be aerodynamically unstable to make it as agile as possible in a dogfight. So it needs 70 computers to keep it in the air. And if they fail, it would simply fall out of the sky. It's kind of a mix of science fiction and brute strength. These wings, for example, have to be able to take the stresses and strains of all those extreme high-speed maneuvers. So they might look all slim and dainty, but each one can take the weight of 35 Volkswagen Golfs. All in all, quite a handy bit of kit as you'd expect, at 67 million a pop. Faced with the clear and present danger of the Eurofighter, the Bugatti Veyron really is the car world's best shot at clinging to some honour. And no one knows what the outcome will be. In fact, Bugatti is so concerned, they've sent over not one, but two Veyrons. Maybe they're going to tie them together or something. The shootout will take place here, on the main runway at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire. And here's the challenge. It's a horizontal versus vertical drag race over two miles. Here's the start-finish line and uh, the car and the plane. Yeah, it's difficult to get hold of models of a Veyron and a Eurofighter. They both start from here. The car will race down the runway for a mile. When it reaches the mile marker, turn as quickly as possible and then race back down over the same mile to cross the start-finish line here. Meanwhile, the plane will set off and take off as quickly as possible and cover a mile, vertically, obviously. When it's done the mile, it turns and swoops back down the same mile to cross the start-finish line. Or, or to crash into a million pound supercar that he didn't expect to see, and YouTube has a field day. Otherwise, his last one to finish is a vegetarian. Simple as that. Now, you might think the plane is going to walk it. But don't be so sure. The car should have the edge off the line. It'll do 0 to 100 in 5.7 seconds, for God's sake. And when it gets to these yellow dots, which mark the mile point where it has to turn around, the Veyron has another advantage. Down here, its awesome brakes should come into play. And then there's the air brake as well, which on its own generates the same stopping power as you'd get in a normal hatchback. 
straight line is a straight line. So the car does what it does there. But up here, I've got to break as late as possible and lose as little time as possible making the turn before the return mile. So I reckon it will be won or lost here at this end. Traction control off, gearbox to manual, launch control, left foot on brake, give it the full beans on the throttle. This is it. Stand by one, give me 20 seconds. As drag races go, you will agree, this is quite a good one. After just 18 seconds, I was doing 188 miles an hour and getting ready to brake for the mile turn. That's as late as a dare. This is where it's won or lost. Six miles an hour, but was it enough? I must still be ahead, I can't see the plane. No! No! I suspect I may get some abuse for this, 